Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to BFW 2401, week three. Today's topic is loan sales and securitization. Uh, before uh, I start, uh, I just like to address some comments. Uh, the first one is loan sales and securitization is actually one of the recent practices in banking. Uh, we didn't have, we just have it a little bit uh, before the financial crisis, and actually it was one of the causes of the financial crisis. Now, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, loan sales and securitization uh, uh, from the perspective of uh, managing uh, interest rate risk. So actually, when we talk about the vehicles of the securitization, when we talk about the process, the main purpose actually is to manage risk, which is the purpose of that call, uh, of this class. Uh, now, we, uh, that doesn't mean uh, loan sales and securitizations uh, cannot be used to control other risks. That doesn't mean loan sales and securitization is a very important tool for the government to stimulate the economy. That doesn't mean that uh, loan sales and securitization uh, is one of the uh, most active tools banks can use uh, to renew uh, their assets and issue more loans. Now, we will talk about these issues as we proceed. Uh, one thing I want to uh, mention before I share my slides is uh, today's uh, topic is not a long topic, actually. And as usual, I have divided into two parts. The first part, we will talk about the loan sales, which is around 17 slides. The second part is, uh, which is a securitization, which we will talk about it, uh, and it is uh, um, 25 slides. Securitization is the uh, 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 topic of the part two of this of this uh, of this uh, lecture. Okay, let me share now uh, my slides and go to. So this is part one, actually. And we are talking about loan sales and securitization. Now, uh, as usual, uh, we are talking today uh, about week three, which is actually we are talking about this area and I have lighted in this blue thing. So today we are talking about loan sales and securitization, which is actually part of the risk management tools. Now we talk about risk before interest rate risk. Now loan sales and securitization is actually helping us to uh, control uh, uh, interest rate risk in addition to the financial derivatives we usually use. But this is a tool actually can be used to control the interest rate risk. Uh, we can also have it to control other risks, but mainly the interest rate risk and we will see how that works. Now, having said that, let me share my um, uh, learning objectives and the agenda for today. Uh, so um, for the whole day, uh, for the whole lecture, I mean. So we want to discover why financial institutions sell loans, learn about the types actually of the, uh, uh, learn about the types of the, learn about the types of the loan sales, and then we talk, we want to talk about, uh, understand how this, and this is the most important thing, how understand which is three, understand how financial institutions use loan sales and securitization to manage their interest rate risk. And number four, uh, we want to see if we go with uh, securitization specifically, which type of loans are best to sell and securitize actually to securitize because you want to back them so usually what all banks are using in australia this country and also in the us where the securitization was very uh, active tools is actually they use uh, the housing loans now we want to discover how financial institution can change the risk characteristics of their balance sheet using this securitization and we want to be able to identify 
uh, and see different terms of um, uh, securization vehicles that the uh, financial institution can have. Uh, so we want to know what vehicles we use to the, um, the securization. Also, we want to know uh, how many types of loans. So in two, we talk about the types of loans. Here, we talk about the type of securization vehicles. And we want also to understand the prepayment risk, which is a risk that is actually related to securitization. And we'll talk about it in part two. Now, this is the agenda for the whole uh, week, uh, lecture of, of this week, which is the uh, introduction, the uh, loan sales, securization, and summary. Now, let me move to. Um, now, this is just a introduction. Um, so, along with other features, as I told you, uh, we use the forward. This is derivatives, right? This is actually a type of derivatives uh, we use to. We use those derivatives, actually, the fault contract options and swaps to control what we call the uh, loan sales. Uh, but and, and, and to control the uh, interest rate risk. Uh, but actually, we use also, as I told you, loan sales and asset securitization to help us uh, control the interest rate risk, as I am going to explain it. Now, why loan sales and uh, uh, or syndication have been in existing for many years, they are not widely used in Australian banks uh, for retail loans. Uh, um, they are not also used uh, for retail loans in this country. Uh, it's a common for foreign banks, um, especially US banks to sell both retail and corporate loans. Uh, securitization is more common in Australia and is principally used by major banks and other financial institutions for retail loans and mortgages. Uh, it's also famous in Malaysia. We have um, uh, um, 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 uh, a party which is called Kagamas, uh, organized and uh, uh, built by the um, government specifically under the supervision of Bank Nigara Malaysia, which is a central bank. And this, this, uh, this party, or Kagamas is actually the one who buy the loans uh, from all banks and sell them and issue uh, Sukuk and issue Sukuk actually in this country. And then um, uh, this is uh, what they do when they buy loans from the, uh, uh, from the commercial banks around here. Now, uh, let's go to the, um, the concept of securitization. Look, uh, this is the balance sheet, assuming we have this balance sheet. Assuming we have this balance sheet before we do any securitization. Now, we have a loan of 90. Maybe we can get rid of all of them. We can sell all of them, but maybe we decide to sell just part of them. And this example I give you, I decided to sell 20 of them. So this is what happened when I sell 20 of them, uh, I will send it to a loan buyer if we're talking about loan sales, or I will um, um, uh, uh, or I will uh, sell it to special purpose vehicle, which is another company that is actually serve as a trustee, which will take all the loans, back them up, and then sell them, uh, and then sell sell them as bond on which we call it uh, uh, backed securities. Now the backed securities uh, uh, are actually type of loans or car loans or any type of loans that have uh, uh, the same characteristics and then they back them and sell them uh, um, as securities which we call it asset backed as securities. Now, this is the whole situation. This is a step one. Now, if you look, what would happen to the financial statement when we say the financial statement will be restructuring? Go now because they will sell, they will take the 20 and it becomes cash. So now this cash is becoming 25. And then the loans is becoming now 70 and instead of 90. This is how they restructure. I just sold 20, what if I sold 90? 
So if I sell 90, I will have all this cash and I can start selling new loans. I can make a new loans, which means if the economy is, if the government wants to stimulate the economy, they will encourage the securitization. So you sell loans and those investors who buy those loans can be inside the country, outside the country, wherever you are listing those, uh, what we call asset backed securities depends on when you where you list it in which uh, uh, country and security commission and you can sell them bring money out side of the country from outside the country and start get loans inside the country so you can stimulate the economy this is the purpose one of the purposes that uh, the government do but it's also good for the loan for the banks because they will collect a little fees here and then they sell the loan yes they will not take care of the interest uh, uh, income will go to the um, uh, what we call the buyer later on, but actually uh, the fees that involved in issuing those loans will be collected by the bank. Then the bank also will continue to issue loans. Now, a loan sale uh, is a sale often by a bank uh, and the contract of all or part of each stream from a specific loan therapy therefore moving the loans from the bank's balance sheet. What about securitization? It's the same concept. However, it's the process of turning assets into securities, which means turning the loans into bonds. Okay. Having said that, um, this is trend. And in each trend, you can see I have given you this sign. You will see it. I say hint trends are not exa exa examined uh, uh, in this unit. So I'm giving it just to explain, but we are not going to ask you what happening in uh, securitization in Australia between 98, and I'm asking about those figures, those just for the, uh, for the sake of the explaining uh, uh, and enriching uh, uh, the understanding of this, of this, of this uh, topic. So as you can see, uh, actually, this is from 1998 to 2011. And if you can see during the financial crisis, started actually from 1998 and going up. And the peak, the peak was actually, and this is a common thing, cross countries. Um, the peak was actually here. During this year, the financial crisis years. See, the peak is here of obscurization in Australia it was very high in this area, which covers all those years before and after the financial crisis. And because of that problem, I told you in the US, when securitization was backing toxic uh, um, assets, which means the some prime loans that were not bad, they were um, you know, backing them and selling them, um, making insurance for them. Um, but then uh, those toxic, uh, 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 actually, um, assets um, were one of the reasons why those defaulting happened later on and why the insurance companies or the credit default swaps cannot pay. Uh, and this is where the you know, collapse started in the US. And of course, in Australia and Malaysia and every country was concerned about it. So they started to drop this issue of securitization. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, also there is um, there has been too much development in the uh, um, and this issue. As I told you, it's a new issue, and it started you know to pick up from 19. But after 2000, actually the peak is here. And as I told you, you can see uh, this is in the U.S. for example, and the U.S. Uh, some of those it's a normal practice. So the blue the blue color here is actually, it was sailed. So we have bar purchases, districts, uh, distressed uh, purchases, which means here we will not, we were selling it without discount, which means in the normal cases, we were not under any pressure to sell. It just was a normal process. Banks issue loans, sell them, issue new bonds, uh, and issue new loans, and then we continue like this. But sometimes, of course, there was sometimes where you are under stress of liquidity, 
or under stress of capital or under stress of any other uh, credit risk, whatever. So in this case, specifically the liquidity issue. So you have to sell your loans. And of course, when you go and you sell them, you will sell them with some type of discount. And we say distressed purchases, um, we are talking about selling them with some discount because you need the money. Again, for this issue, I'm coming with this hand, which is this actually not examinable, but only for your information. Now, let me go to, uh, this is in Malaysia. Malaysia, I get those data uh, and you can look at them if you like. Uh, maybe when we bring the uh, pre uh, class activity, you want to use some of those information to, uh, to enrich your discussion. But actually this is the, uh, this is the issues. And this is the issue amount in million of ringgits. If you are talking about Malaysia, if you are international students and uh, um, it's very easy to get information about securitization in your country, and you can check that through the uh, uh, central bank and they can provide you with this data. And some of these data are public and you can find it online. Uh, if your country is active actually in securitization. So this is the maturity dates. As you can see, this is more details maturity dates and then the profit we're giving somebody will say will say what do you mean by profit because they are issuing it in Malaysia as Sukuk Sukuk does not recognize interest uh, but they recognize something called profit so it's not our topic here uh, it just you know um, for the sake of information and sharing information with you uh, the, uh, uh, they use the profit sales, which is actually, um, it's a return. It's a return as you can see it. Uh, um, and and not conventional bond, uh, we talk about uh, uh, interest or corporate interest. This is, the, they talk about profit rate. Uh, now, and this is the spread over the uh, uh, basis points. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, this is the spread, which means there was, um, some spread over the, uh, what we call the, uh, uh, this is in basis point. This is in basis point, okay? So this is list one, 27% of basis point, 46, which is not too much actually, 51, 68, 73, it's less than uh, 1%. So this is the rate of this Sukuk that were issued or the bond that were issued, which is just a little bit over the overnight rate. Actually, it's a cheap price. Now, uh, this is another issue in the world, which is, I think, um, uh, to see what's going on now. It's very interesting, you know? So you have the US and um, uh, these numbers actually, and uh, so I take it, uh, it's all data. See, the US is actually, they have so many vehicles. EPS, CPS, don't worry about it. We will talk about three vehicles later on. But you see 520 is actually uh, is, is what the US have. Uh, later on, you can see Europe is just 80 to 90, okay, a billion. And if you can talk about the Asia Pacific is a little bit, we have 260, uh, we have China is picking up. And you can see in Latin America, um, it's just a little bit. So it's actually not um, a very common practice only for those developed economies. Uh, uh, China is picking up, it's almost three times as Europe. And then you can see the US is actually leading the securitization, but everybody actually is, is, is using it, okay? Again, this is also a trend for your information. Now, uh, Let's go now to the things that we need to understand, which is the types of loan sales and contracts. When I sell a loan, I can sell it under two arrangements. And uh, before we, you know, I don't want you to uh, say, oh, this is too many things here. It's just when I sell a loan, it's the credit risk. It's only the credit risk. When I sell a loan, the buyer has to go and follow the borrower, which means now if I have a housing loan of you, or you will have a car loan in the future, uh, you will see a letter from the bank saying, uh, please from next month pay your installments and 
um, to this account. And maybe after two years or one year, or maybe the same year, this is very common in the US, they will send you another letter and say, will you please pay it to, the, uh, to this account. Actually, this is the new buyers. So loan sales, they bring them from illiquid, very illiquid assets, which means they only can, can be liquidated after 20 years or 10 years. Um, car loan will liquidate after five years, but I can, if, I, if the bank sell it and it's already in the market, so investors can update their portfolios and keep buying those loans. Now they can buy it at loans or they can buy it as securitization, as securities, which is as bonds. Now let's talk about loans. Now, uh, this is what's happening, you know? So when I sell it to someone, I have two arrangements. I tell them, okay, go, uh, this is the arrangement with you, go and collect those loans. And the loans I sell them for you with this discount, they agree in the price. I will, have give, I will give you an example about that. But then if somebody defaults, if somebody defaults, of course you sell the loan, which means the present value of the loan, with some return you give it to the to the to the investor. So if uh, there is a default from the borrower, then in this case you come back to the seller. This one we call it participation. It's just a credit risk, huh? We call it participation. We call it uh, participation. And then uh, the other one, which is actually participation, or later on we will call it sell it with recourse. Recourse means you can come back to me if the one of the customers uh, did not pay. So for example, if Maybank sell uh, their loans to public bank, and public bank are actually interested to, uh, they have this, uh, what you call uh, good management in collecting uh, loans and following borrowers, uh, they can buy it. But if one of the borrowers is not paying, they will go to my bank and my bank has to pay them. Now, um, uh, so the, the public bank in this case, which is the buyer, has two exposures in terms of credit risk. He will follow the borrower and if he doesn't pay, he go to the bank and hopefully the bank will pay. So exposures, two exposures actually, uh, to the seller and to the borrower, which is the, on, uh, the, uh, the, the, one, the holder of the loan. Now, the other one is, which is actually the normal practice, is selling with assignment. Assignment means I will sell it to you and it's up to you and you go and collect. If anybody default, it's your problem. There is an implication that I will be responsible later on, but actually uh, the case is um, uh, the buyer has nothing to do with any future problem with the credit risk. It's now the seller, he can buy uh, the buyer. I mean, the seller has nothing to do with the loans after they sell them. It's now the business of the buyer and he has to uh, manage with that uh, defaulting of the borrowers. He can buy derivatives, he can do whatever, he can use uh, um, good management to follow, can, you know, what, but when they do that, they have to receive the price of selling the loan should be cheaper, not like this one. When you sell the loan here, it's actually more expensive. Here, cheaper, so your return is higher, so it can cover any credit risk. So if the credit risk is around 2%, 3% of the borrowers that will not pay, you include it in your, um, you include it in your, uh, maybe 1%, whatever, you include it in your, uh, um, in your agreement when you buy. So a loan, if you are requiring 5% and you think 2% of the people will not pay, so you ask for 7%. So they sell you all each loan with 93%, something like this, okay? Uh, and this is what you call assignment, that's all. This is the two types of, uh, this is the two types of, uh, of loans. So uh, again, if you want to, um, I mean, that one is, uh, uh, that mind, what we call it mind uh, mapping for the two loans is easier, but then, uh, 
we go for second thing, why we sell loans? We sell loans for the following purposes. And what are those purposes? Credit risk management, first interest rate risk, and we will talk about it later. Uh, credit risk management, reserve requirements, fee income, capital cost, and liquidity risk. Now, this is additional to the interest rate risk. Now, the, the credit risk management, which means uh, when you loan, when see, when you sell a loan, you sell it with, uh, with all its problem. Now, uh, there is a problem, which means if, if you actually, uh, uh, if you actually uh, make bad loans and sell them, this is also uh, you know a, a risk involved in the loan sales. If the buyer intentionally uh, bring bad loans, take the fees and sell them uh, to to someone else, then this is one of the problems. But actually, uh, the credit risk management. If you have more credit risk management. Maybe because you are not collecting, or maybe because the borrower needs more following, or whatever. So you said the loans, um, but this there is an implication here. It doesn't completely eliminate the credit risk exposure because the loan sales contain an implicit quality guarantee by the lending uh, financial institution. Now, um, um, reserve requirements, uh, as we say before. Um, the, the reserve requirements in this country, for example, is 4%. For each deposit you receive, which is $1, you have to pay 4 cents, keep it without any return with a central bank. Now, if I'm going to sell those assets and take the money and give it back to the depositors, which means I decreased my deposits. And when I decrease my deposits, I'm going to decrease the reserve requirements, which means if I sell, uh, uh, if I have say 100 million of my 100 uh, uh, billion loans as one of those huge banks, and I sell uh, say 5% or 10% of them, then in this case I may big, I make a, I can make 4% of that 10 billion, which is huge amounts. I can free it from central bank if I return this money to the depositors. Now, fee income is one of the most important thing and actually the main motive why banks do that. Um, they, they actually, for example, uh, May Bank today or Public Bank or Hong Leong or anyone uh, can, what do they do? They just uh, promise people or open applications uh, for housing loans for 2022 and they start receiving from now. Uh, so they can say we are going to issue uh, 1,000 loans of 1 million. Now, when they issue this or 500 loans, say for 1 million, this is 500 million already. Now, if you, if you do that, um, by, and you promise to do that by January 21, uh, 22, so in January 22, people will come and sign all those contracts and actually receive the money. And when they do that, they will have to pay fees. In the same day, you have already your arrangements to sell those loans. So in the second day or in the same day, you sell it to Kagamas, which is this party in, in, in Malaysia, or to special purpose vehicle, who is going to take that to care of those. So actually what you did, yes, you are not going to receive any interest in the future, but actually you are receiving fee income. Now, uh, there is also a capital cost, which means now, when you sell a loan, what would happen? When you sell a loan, you decrease your assets. And the capital is 10.1% of your earning assets. Now, or risk system assets, say earning assets. If you decrease your assets by selling them and transferring, um, um, 
and transforming those assets to um, uh, cash, actually you are decreasing the earning assets or the rest of assets. And then your capital requirements, which is 10.5 of uh, your outstanding rest of assets is decreased in dollar value. This is what we say, the capital cost. And then the liquidity risk, maybe this is the most important thing, which is actually you are going to transfer very, very illiquid assets called drones and, and uh, say uh, a week or something, if you sell them, you can receive the cash and it becomes now, you can sell your liquidity problem even faster than that. So they will pay you the, uh, um, I mean, it depends on the process of the buyer, um, then you can transfer those liquid assets to cash, which is very liquid. Now, uh, let me go back to the, uh, which I didn't talk about it actually, the interest rates, loan sales, securitization to manage interest rate risk. This is actually the, uh, the third slide, the second slide actually after the, uh, but I, I choose to cover it in this area after we cover why we do it. Look, I will, uh, I give you this table and it's very interesting, but now uh, let me take all of those off. And take this thing off. If the interest rate is, if you have risk sensitive asset 15, and this is 10. So in this case, you will have what? You will have uh, a positive gap of five. And this is very good for you. This is very good for you if the interest rate is increasing. But now assuming the interest rate is decreasing. Now we are saying the interest rate is actually increasing. So you want to, um, you remember uh, the uh, repricing gap and the repricing gap, which is the, uh, the risk sensitive assets. This is the repricing minus the sensitive liabilities. Now, if this is, if this is uh, plus and the interest rate is going up, then actually you are in good position and you don't have to change anything. But if the interest rate is going down, If the interest rate is going down, which means you need this number to be minus. So what do you do? Solution is loan sales and securitization. Go and sell how much of this? You will transfer this and sell 10 of them. So if you go and you sell 10, you will be living with five. Then in this case, this will be minus. So if the interest rate is decreasing, you can sell all of them, but I said decreasing, then this is a good position. So this is how we play, coming back to the concept of how interest rate risk actually helping, uh, how the securitization on one sales, helping us controlling the gap. And if I control the gap, I control my uh, what we call interest rate risk. This is why we say securitization and loan sales, as we said here, is actually used to uh, manage interest rate risk. Okay, let me now come back to uh, my old things. And if you can see here, if I go back, now you can see this is the right position I should take. This is the right position. 
I should take. Yeah, sorry. So if the interest rate, if I don't know, actually, if I don't know, if no information, I may take this position, make it zero. So I will sell. If this is the original, if this is the original, if this is the original uh, 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 position of myself, which is I have this and this. If the interest rate is increasing, I am fine. If, the, if I don't know, I may just sell five and make it 10. If actually the, I know that interest rate is decreasing, I may go and um, you know sell, uh, this will be increased and this can be 10. This is a good position also. So I can even make this, uh, as I told you before, I can make it five, and this is actually give it 10 and this is the five. So this is what we are talking about when we talk about interest rate risk. This is a very interesting issue. I want you to take care of that. Okay, uh, now I have done this. So uh, I told you this is the reasons. So the interest rate risk is the most important thing. And then we have, we can control what we say, the credit risk, the reserve requirement, the fee income, the capital cost, and liquidity. More explanation is actually coming here, and we will talk about it uh, in the tutorial. So as I said, we have loan sales and participation, participation and assignments, I already explained it, and we can do it for credit risk, for reserve requirements, for fee income, for capital cost, and liquidity risk um, uh, can be reduced by loan sales. Uh, this is the reasons, okay. Now, let me tell you, go to the math issue or the calculation. Now, we have two concepts, um, selling with recourse. Please connect this with assignment. So this is the assignment arrangements. And this is selling without recourse. Oh, sorry. This is the participation. loan sales with participation and this loan sales, the other one is uh, without recourse means what, if you remember, Simon. So those two terms are actually are used. Okay, I already mentioned it here actually, it's participation and it is assignment. So this is, I want you to understand, this is actually the assignment and this is, the uh, uh, participation. Now the calculation, uh, when, we, when, when the buyer come to us, um, he is buying a future cash flow. Let's agree on this. He is buying a future cash flow. Now is we buying a, a future cash flow, the thing that we are saying now is to, if we are saying a future cash flow, which means I have only to discount these things in the future and we get to time zero where we are talking to sell those loans. It depends now or uh, on the arrangement whether it is participation or loan sales, and it depends on, on so on the uh, current uh, uh, interest rate in the market, or which you, you will use it to discount this future cash flow to time zero. So look, you are now there. Is, there are two people are uh, you know uh, uh, discussing this contract. The most important thing to discuss is the price. So the price is actually because you know this uh, loan is a housing loan, and this is the installment for the next uh, 214 months, which is 20 years. So how much is it now? You just take the discount rate until now, and you price it there based on the uh, you discount the the payments on the future and you put it uh, uh, actually there. Okay, so this is, uh, we can use actually the present value of annuity. Okay, what about if it is a business loan? If it is a business loan, which means I am going to take a 10 million now, I will pay you the interest during the last uh, next three years, but then I will pay you the, uh, then I will pay you the principal end of the three months. Now it's a different case, which means the button of the payment, which means they have interest, interest, interest for three months. 
uh, for three years. And the third year I have, so the first year I will have the interest, second year I will have the interest, third year I will have the interest plus the principal. So in this case, I will, the, those three payments of the, the interest, uh, I will use the annuity to discount them. And the last one I will use single amount. So I'm using this formula for the single amount. And I'm using this for the annuity. Uh, uh, this is an example, a good example I can show you here. So assuming we have uh, a three-year 10 million loan that pays um, an annual interest of 8%, uh, the principal due uh, at the end of uh, the third year, uh, the bank, see, so we have 8%. Um, uh, we, we have uh, uh, 10 million will be paid after three years. And the eight percent of that uh, ten million will be paid during the third year, three years. So actually, I'm using the same formula, which is I'm using this one for the single amount, and this is for the payments. Uh, otherwise, uh, in other words, we are using the present value, which actually the eight hundred. This is the annuity. This is the three payments. And this is the single amount. And this amount is. 9,008723. One more thing. Now we are talking about with recourse or without recourse. We are talking without re with recourse. With recourse mean what? As uh, participation means if there is a credit risk, it will be uh, my problem as a seller, which means I'm going to sell this loan more expensive or less expensive than assignment. It will, should be higher price, so the buyer will get less return. And this is why we are using here 8.5. So the buyer is getting 8.5. If the buyer agree to go without recourse, which means assignment, it's his problem, then I increased his return. Then I increased his return to 8.75. And I discounted. If you compare between this amount, this price and this price, actually you will find this one is cheaper, which means uh, this one more expensive. This is cheaper for the investor, but that cheap is in the expense of a credit risk that he may have in the future. It will be his problem. So this guy gave him 25 basis point more. That's all for securitization, uh, this uh, all for loan sales. Nothing wrong in it. It's very interesting. It's, I think, uh, easy to understand. And uh, uh, I will just move uh, in a while to the uh, second uh, thing, uh, to the second, uh, uh, to the second uh, part, which we will talk about securitization. So um, in brief, uh, loan sales uh, have only, we have to understand why we do it. Uh, what does interest rate, uh, why the interest rate is important to control, how loan sales help us in controlling the loan sale at uh, the uh, uh, interest rate, and what are the other advantages, which is the credit risk, liquidity risk, capital and reserve, and then the calculation, which is, which is the types of the um, loans, um, I mean the selling, which is, uh, as I said, assignment or uh, uh, assignment or, uh, or or participation and the calculation. Uh, that's all for me uh, now. Thank you. Bye bye and see you part two.